Shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters. Well, this is the fourth time I'm trying to get this video up. So you're going to want to like, subscribe, click the bell, click all, and share this while you can. Because um, there are forces that want to keep this video from going forth. But you know what? Let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, we pray that this message will go forward clear and sound and have the impact that you would desire it to have. And this we pray in the name that is above every name, that every attack against this channel and this message must bow to, we pray in the name of Yeshua Jesus. Amen. Wow, we are living in such perilous, chaotic, sobering times, but the most glorious time in church history, because we are at the end of this 2,000 year period, the end of this dispensation, the end of this church age, and brothers and sisters, I am here to tell you, the bridegroom cometh. When? I don't know, but we know the times and the seasons, and we know we are in the last hour. Until then, we will occupy and redeem the time. I want to thank Brother Jordan, Brother Clayton, Brother Keegan, and Sister Ashley, our prophecy reporters, all of the moderators, and each of you for your input. Look, while I may be the face of it, I'm going to tell you, we do this to the glory of God. We dedicate this channel to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to preaching the gospel that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead. And when you believe, he always existed. God, the Son, the Son of God, he left glory, laid down his glory, was born of a virgin, wrapped in flesh, lived a perfect life, never sinned, and shed his precious blood to pay our sin debt once and for all, past, present, and future. When you believe that, that he died for your sins, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead, there are over 200 verses in the Bible that speak of solo fide, Faith plus nothing equals salvation and eternal security. You are born again. You are indwelt with Holy Spirit. You are saved, sealed, and sanctified until the day of redemption. Heaven bound and rapture ready. Praise God. You know, John 3.16 sums it up so well. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, I'm a whosoever, are you whosoever? believeth in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Praise God, praise God. Well, I want to, uh, uh, just a quick announcement. I will be reviewing for tomorrow's message uh, for this channel, the authority of the believer. That's very important, especially in this time at the end of this dispensation we're living in. Also, make sure you're subscribed, click the bell, click all. I've already said that. And there's a lot of conspiracy on the internet. These are my express opinions only. Don't take anything I say as being medical, financial, or political advice, okay? So the caveat's out there. Now, what is really going on? We're seeing Israel about to just cross the border completely. And it, it could happen this weekend. And just go at Hezbollah. Hezbollah keeps sending rockets. Israel keeps taking out their leaders and their munitions. You've been hearing about this in the news. They have the battle with Hamas. We're almost October 7th will be a year since the, that horrific attack on Israel. There are still something like 100 hostages unaccounted for. I wear this. I got this in December, um, last December. And until they're all accounted for, I will wear it. I was there in July. I am an eyewitness. And so we see this going on. You have these wars and rumors of wars that the Bible talked about. What is really going on? So you have Hezbollah commanders saying things like, this will be our last war. You have them saying, this is doomsday. You have Israel saying they're going to reshape the Middle East now. And there's no backing down. You have Kamala Harris and 
the Biden administration trying to force Israel into a two-state solution. You have the International Court of Justice and the world coming against Israel, wanting them to have a two-state solution. The prophet Zechariah, we say Zechariah, Zechariah in 12.2 says, you, meaning Israel, will be a, Jerusalem, it says specifically, will be a cup of reeling for the world. You know, it was back in 2015 that then President Barack Hussein Obama signed by executive order and then many other nations followed suit to JCPOA. That is the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, better known as the Iran Nuke Deal. I sent back in two, I said back in 2015, within 10 years, Iran would have the nuclear capability of obliterating Israel. But we know that won't happen. We know the nations that the prophet Yehezkel in 38 and 39 prophesied would come down from the north, all have military there now in Syria, that they'll come down to attack Israel. I believe the hook in the jaw will be for the Golan Heights, for the resources around that. That's just my belief. But we do know what the word of God says. They will come down. They will come down. But God himself, he who neither slumbers nor sleeps, will defend Israel. So we know the end of the story. All this is about dividing the land of Israel. And peace for land has never worked. But it goes deeper than that. See, the enemy wants Israel obliterated. He could not stop from the Genesis 3.15 prophecy. He could not stop the seed, the Mashiach, from coming, the Messiah, the Christ, he tried to with Moses, with well, with Pharaoh at the time of Moses and the, the Hebrew children, the boys, right, murdering them. He tried with Herod, doing the same thing around the time of Jesus' birth. He tried to tempt Jesus in the desert to not go to the cross and worship him and he'll give him the kingdoms of this earth. And then now he's trying to prevent him from having the very place where his feet, the prophecy say, will land. And he will set up the millennial kingdom because Satan knows he'll be thrown into the abyss. He knows what the word says. Maybe he's too arrogant and prideful to believe it. And he knows at the end that he'll be cast into hell of the millennial period. So that's why the battle over Israel. But what God has ordained, what his word declares, we're seeing it. Prophecies from 25 to 2800 years ago, jumping off the pages of the Bible. It would take more faith not to believe the word of God than to believe the word of God. And the reason that we have this channel is to spread the good news, the gospel of our salvation. And praise God for the many who have been born again. We give God all the glory. Also, the prophetic. We're going to continue talking about the prophecies because we are in the last hour of this end of the age. And we want people to see and to believe and to believe on Yeshua, Jesus, that he died for their sins, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead. Well, that gives you the, the focus and, and what we're doing here. Now, I want to go over a couple things in the news. So, in good news, you know, Corey Ten Boone, The Hiding Place, the author of The Hiding Place. If you don't know her, Corey Ten Boom, I encourage you to look her up. What an amazing, what an amazing life, how God used her, having survived the concentration camps. She and her family hiding out Jews and then being sent to concentration camps themselves. Once flying over the Ozarks, like that Branson area, Kirbyville, Missouri, and then into um, the Boston, from the St. Francis to the Boston Mountain Range, particularly over Harrison, Arkansas, and those areas in the Ozarks, she prophesied that there would be a great end time awakening or revival coming from there, and we are seeing it. Listen to this. Over 10,000 students, this was organized by Unite US, over 10,000 students from 67 different universities gathered in Bud Walton Arena, quote, Jesus met us there, end quote. The ministry said in an Instagram post, quote, we were blown away by the presence in the room and how it carried over to baptisms. 
It was a night we'll never forget, end quote. One young man shared his testimony, and I want to share it. He, right before getting baptized at that event, now, he knows he's not saved by being water baptized. He was saved by believing on Yeshua. So they report that there's been over 2,000 born again, over 800 baptisms. Baptism is simply an outward expression of an, of an inward reality, and we do celebrate that in the church. Um, it's an ordinance of the church, but it's not a requirement unto salvation. I always want to be clear on that. Anyway, he shared he spent a lot of years running from God. He just came to Jesus about five weeks ago, but he got caught up in cocaine and alcohol. He said he had a lot of really near-death experiences, and he thinks Jesus had his hand on his life because he should not be here. And here he is at this awakening, and many are getting delivered from these addictions and strongholds. God is good, and God is faithful. Now, that's on the good news. We were seeing birth pains, like Taiwan had a 5 point three magnitude earthquake that rattled the place. We have more earthquakes in a day than there used to be in a decade. But I want to talk for a minute about a negative thing. Now, I I do not believe that this woman who claims to be a pastor, she is not a she is not a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I can tell you that based on what I saw in her video. She she would be a minister of the synagogue of Satan. I highly doubt the woman is born again. I'm not one to judge based on I don't know her, but I saw what she said in the video, and this is just, this is abominable. It is so anti the word of God and anti-Christ, and based on the video, I would guess that she's universalist. You don't have to believe in Jesus according to them. You don't have to believe the word. Yeah, that, listen, if you don't believe, that, that's how you're born again, by believing, pistua, the Greek word. I have faith in, I trust in, I'm firmly persuaded. What? That Christ died for my sins, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead. That's it. That's the simplicity of the gospel. But this is what she said. Wearing her ministerial stole, if you don't want that, when you see that thing that comes around their neck and hangs down, that's called a minister's stole. Many in mainline denominations and and very religious type people will wear those stoles. This is her quote. Jesus would take women to get abortions and would be a clinic escort, end quote. No, he wouldn't. That is anti the word of God. Abortion is murder. How dare this woman attribute that to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, she goes on. She says, and this is this article, you can find this in endtimesheadlines.org. She literally says this, quote, Blessed are those who end pregnancies, for they will be known for their loving kindness, end quote. What's she doing? She's talking, she's trying to repeat the Beatitudes, she, uh, the Sermon on the Mount. She's, she's trying to make this like one of them. This is horrific. She goes on to say that she had four pregnancies, two abortions, and she has two children. And everyone was something, I can't remember the exact word, but a, a divine experience or blessed or whatever. Lies, lies, it's murder. And listen, if you've had an abortion, I want you to know there is forgiveness and God loves you. My wife, my dear wife, who's been gone over three and a half years, many of her years was spent working, volunteering in crisis pregnancies. And then she was a director, a pay position for a crisis pregnancy center. At, she was actually running one at one time, but she was uh, in charge of post-abortive counseling, women who had abortions, who need it to know the love of God, to be born again, and to find forgiveness. This woman goes on to say, over one in four women by the age of 45 will have an abortion. And those statistics are true to the best of our knowledge. And if you're one of them, I want you to know there is forgiveness, but you need to know it is murder. It is wrong. I don't want you suffering. I want you to find peace. And there's ways to get help. And you can reach me at timhendersonministries.org or timhenderson.tv with that or your prayer request or whatnot. And I am happy to, in fact, as we are working to set up, thank you, Holy Spirit. That's one of the things we'll do. As we're working to build, we're, right now, I got a call from a man who's going to get the main residence ready. 
but then we're talking about a building to house the women and children coming out of human trafficking, along with this and sharing the gospel and the prophecies. It's what God has called us to do. And so um, I believe we'll have a meeting room and women who have had abortions, we can have gatherings where uh, we'll take women through the healing process and help them to name their babies that are in heaven with the Lord and to get that peace and and abound in his grace and his love and his forgiveness. We don't want you struggling with that. So if you need help, reach out to us. But this is just to show you the way the culture is gone. I'll tell you what, even so, come Lord Jesus. Well, I want you guys to know what is really going on with all of this. You, you have nations like Saudi Arabia that President Trump had negotiated the Abraham Accords that since then have come out and said, no two-state solution, no Abraham Accords. This is a move of the enemy, this two-state solution. And the Harris, the, I should say the Biden-Harris administration and Kamala Harris and her bid for the presidency, God have mercy on us, her bid for the presidency has come out and she is trying to force a two-state solution, as is the UK and other nations. This is all an end-time play. This is an end-time play, President Trump said. And the Kremlin parliamentarians for Vladimir Putin have come out and said, look, we've got nuclear warheads to the West, in particular those European nations, from detonation to impact three and a half minutes. Like, President Trump has said, we are closer to World War III than we ever have been. He is telling the truth. We are closer than we ever have been. But I know this. God is God. I believe we'll be gone in the rapture before then. But even if not, to live is Christ, to die is gain. We have nothing to fear. Jesus is surely coming for his bride soon. Until then, we want to occupy and redeem the time. And that's why with passion, with vigor, with the cooperation, with Holy Spirit, and Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit leading us, we are running in this last hour, and then we're going to be caught up to glory in the twinkling of an eye. Well, I wanted to share this today. Stay tuned for the message for tomorrow. We're going to review the authority of the believer. God bless you guys. Remember, he loves you fiercely and passionately. I love you too. Shalom, shalom.